I have been fortunate enough to avoid a collision in the real world that airbags were deployed. We're always looking for continuous improvement and through our field data analysis, we recognize that there's an opportunity to have a restraint system that can better handle load cases that are more omnidirectional. This airbag system is really looking at load cases where it's at an off axis, let's say 20, 30 degrees, where now the occupant isn't coming straight into the restraint system, it's actually coming at an angle into the restraint system. So with this new system, we can better manage lateral forces that are coming into the airbag system, meaning from the occupant, and we're able to provide a better restraining system from the airbag. This unique solution consists of an airbag that has three chambers. The center chamber is actually offset from the two outboard chambers. Connecting the two outboard chambers is a sail panel. And what's unique is behind the sail panel is actually what we call uninflated volume, meaning that volume doesn't have to be inflated by the pressure of the inflator. And what that enables us to do is keep the inflation pressures low or similar to the current technology, so we're not more aggressively deploying the airbag, which keeps our risk of injury from a deploying airbag low. Additionally, when we can use this uninflated volume, we can actually bring the restraining surface closer to the occupant, and we can begin that energy management much earlier in the event, resulting in lower probability of injuries. The technology is patented and the unique feature that is patented is most airbags from a top view are shaped like a V. This one is actually inverted from that and that's fundamentally what's different between this airbag and a majority of airbags that are in the field. This patent is co-shared with our supplier and it's available through them to all of the other OEMs in the industry. So the Honda R&D actually in Ohio helped lead this development, validated it here on site. We're able to use our new advanced dummies. We're able to use our impact simulator or our sled room to validate that design. And then finally, our crash barrier to make sure that it was ready for mass production. You know, the fact that we hope that most customers never have to see the technology that we put into the car, but the reality is it happens. Over 37,000 deaths on our roadways a year means people still need us. And the fact that that happens at a time when nobody expects it, we're there, we're protecting you. It's almost like the hands of the engineers kind of embracing those people during that crash is kind of how I think about our restraining development. When people ask me what I do, I said, you want the glorious version of my job? And they're like, yeah. And I said, I crash cars. And they're like, that's so cool. I'm like, but it's a lot of hard work. I am a technical leader in the Crashworthiness group here within the safety department at Honda R&D. Ever since I was a child, I somehow had an affinity for destroying things. A famous quote from my father was, don't you do anything constructive? Yeah, I found a job doing destructive work, so it kind of worked out. My first day at Honda was a co-op student. I was studying engineering at Ohio State University, and we were in the development of the first Acura MDX. My first day, I went over to TRC and they ran an offset deformal barrier test. From the moment it hit the wall, I was like, I love this job. I need to get a job here in the automotive safety department. We are in the crash simulator, part of the safety department. In this facility, the sled gives us an opportunity to very cost-effectively tune restraint systems. And we can recreate a crash by, instead of decelerating it, we can actually accelerate it down the sled and we can understand the airbag systems and use it as our tuning and optimizing tool before we proceed to the next stage, which is the full crash vehicle testing. So we can tune seat belts, we can tune airbags, we can tune interior components, all looking at anything that could be injurious to the occupant. And we make sure that we mitigate the probability of that injury through tuning of these restraint systems. When we think about safety for everyone, I think this is where we get tied in, right? We do a ton of work here to optimize that restraint system and making sure it's the safest we can provide to our customers. I love what I do here. I 100% put all my energy in automotive safety. I don't consider this a job. I'm definitely a geek. Maybe I'm not as geeky as some, but yeah, I definitely, you know, try to stay on top of the technology as much as I can. 
So I've been with Honda 25 years and I came here right out of college. I had an interest in technology, graduated with a degree in electrical engineering from an electrical viewpoint. I've tested pretty much every system in the car. Back when I started, the group was very small and it's grown tremendously over the 25 years. Active safety is the safety that happens before a crash. So it includes the warning to assist the driver that there's a potential collision about to happen to give the driver time to react and potentially avoid that collision. It's also the preventative, applying the brakes to avoid that crash if the driver doesn't take that action. The first introduction for Honda came in about 10, 15 years ago when we applied just CMBS, Collision Mitigation Brake System. It wasn't called Honda Sensing back then, but that was kind of our first introduction to this type of technology. As we added more features, Lane Keep Assist, Road Departure Mitigation, then we gave it a name Honda Sensing. It's an assistive feature. It's not there to take over the driving task. Honda Sensing provides safety for people outside the vehicle by detecting pedestrians or bicyclists and other road users. Pedestrian AEBs is more challenging than detecting a car. Main reason, pedestrians can kind of approach from, from any direction. We have to detect them quicker and be able to react and apply the brakes sooner so we don't collide with them. I think in order to reduce fatalities drastically further, I think active safety has to continue to evolve. More scene coverage, intersections, various road departures, even weather conditions. We have to continue to study what are the highest modes of collisions and fatalities. Once we can understand that, then we can kind of start to attack it and try to see what is the next feature, what is the next technology we have to put on the car to bring the fatality reduction down further. This is going to allow cars to be more self-sufficient. They're gonna be able to correct driver mistakes. So as the processing improves, we'll be able to do more and more. I did all my education in India. Then I moved to United States and did my master's in mechanical engineering. That's when I got exposed to safety engineering and simulation. When I started in 2003, I directly was recruited in the simulation department as an engineer. So from day one, that has been my job at Honda to do simulations and to improve the safety of our vehicles. The simulation technology has vastly improved in the last two to three decades. Originally, the whole intent was to just use simulations to check design A versus B versus C and to check your designs. But today it has come to a stage where you can get an absolute answer before you run any physical crash test to say if you meet all your requirements. So that way, the simulation technology evolved vastly where all the physics can be greatly captured to get the right answer. The safety for everyone concept that Honda has been following over the last few decades is on a very strong concept that puts the customer at the focus point. So it kind of helps us drive our designs in making our cars much safer and better because we are not only talking about protecting the driver, but we are talking about all the occupants in the car and those outside the car so that we can protect them. I think we'll continue to evolve and grow and take on the key challenges that we have with the new kind of electrification of our vehicles. So we have new challenges to protect our batteries and how we evolve those kind of simulation models. Now we answer the major questions, but in terms of safety, we have next level of details on protecting external things like the pedestrian safety and all these things. So we, our, our focus has been trying to improve all these techniques and make simulation more robust and get the right answer.